it's really beginning to feel good out here. I kind of enjoy it when it's in the shade. But boy, when it's in the sun, man, is it hot. You know, people ask me, why? Why bother? Why go out of your way to set up your little mini cam? <laughs> your computer, use what you little resources you have and what time you have and possess to do what you do. You know, those are good questions. We all should ask them, you know, why? Why are you doing what you do and why am I doing this? And the answers have to be individual and personal because if there's some contrived religious cliche, they don't have the power of God behind them and the reality of what your life is all about. They don't have meaning and they don't have design or purpose and what will happen is that you'll end in frustration because your quote unquote ministry will turn to ashes in your mouth and taste horrible in the end. So if what you're doing, <laughs> to put it bluntly, isn't fun, Oh, sure, struggling at times. But if it isn't fun and you're not enjoying it, then no offense, why are you doing it if God hasn't told you to? Because at some point in time, besides the trials and tribulations, you should be able to count it all joy, no matter what you're doing. You should be able to find a way, find a design, find a purpose that God's hand is in, that he's brought you to some new awareness of himself in what you're doing today. Every day you should be able to do that. I do. Okay, maybe you won't, but I do. I see God in everything that happens around me, in every movement of the leaves on the trees to the wind blowing through the breeze and the whisper of the wind of God speaking in my ear, the delight that I have in seeing whippoorwills or hummingbirds come flying by or people busy about the work that they do and challenged by their own ideas of what is priorities. And when I consider all these things, then I know that I like where I'm at. <laughs> I like the fact that God brought me this far. I enjoy the reality that Jesus is alive in me. And I thank God for all the people that contributed and participated in making me who I am today and causing me to go in the direction that I did. Because it wasn't a matter of just going to church, but there were people that inspired me, like Keith Greens and Romaines and Chuck Smith, people like Greg Laurie or Mike McIntosh or Raul Reese, John Corson, even people that to this day frustrate me like some of my friends did and caused me that no matter what I shared with them they just remain who they are and praise the Lord you know that's good I'm glad that they are I'm glad that they do I'm glad that they have been true to who they are as personalities and God knows what he's doing with them because I sure don't but I don't need to what I need to do is every day realize that I need to start my day right and end it right. And all through the day, take the time to check in with God and make sure that I'm on the right path, heading the right direction, doing the right thing, and enjoying what I'm doing. Because we all need help at times. And like I said when I started Devotional, this isn't just about you listening to some goofball <laughs> on the internet recording devotionals but this is about you holding me accountable to read my devotionals because like I said I used to read these every day more than these actually and without you to share them with and participate with me by way of the spirit and the internet and cyber this and cyber that but without you to help me to be consistent and persistent I wouldn't read them. I'm just as lazy as you are. I'd throw them away or cast them aside or pretend like I'm busy doing something else that I need to be done. Whether it be work or life or doorbells or phones or whatever we say interrupts us from spending time, quality time with God. 
figures. I do all this babbling, and then God wants to do some talking, and it fits perfectly. <laughs> and I didn't read it ahead of time, although I doubt that people watching videos believe that. But go where God sends you. Let us all come forward and draw near with true, honest, and sincere hearts in an unqualified assurance and absolute conviction engendered by faith, by that leaning of the entire human personality on God in absolute trust and confidence in His power, wisdom, and goodness. Hebrews 10:22. One of the main reasons people don't enjoy their lives is that they don't follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus fulfilled the law we have full freedom to enter into the Holy of Holies and fellowship with the Father. Hebrews calls this a fresh, new, and living way to enjoy our relationship with God. Read Hebrews 10.20. Spend time with God today and go wherever the Spirit of God leads you. He will always give you the grace to do what He calls you to do. You know, if I thought about the fact that I just talked about all that before reading this and then I read it and it happens to fit perfectly and it's not a coincidence and I didn't read it ahead of time, I'd have to say, kiss me, no, <laughs> I'd have to say, huh, and that's usually my word for, wow, isn't that awesome? God just blessed my socks off by making me, showing me that I am doing what he wants me to do in his will and that not this stupid, perfect, and permissive, but rather accomplishing the fulfillment of why he has me here today, sharing and caring. And you know, that's how it works for you too. Whatever fits in your life, in the circumstances of your life today, as you listen to his voice, and as you do anything in his name that you've committed to him, he will speak to you in it by making that fit your circumstances of your life. And you know, you're going to feel like a blooming idiot. <laughs> the reason being is that when you try to tell someone about it, they aren't going to believe you either. <laughs> and that's okay, because faith is not the substance of things that are already accomplished that we look back on and say, yeah, well, I had great faith and accomplished this and that. No, it's just the realization that God did it. You just went along for the ride. And that's the fact. You may think that you have such great faith and step out and accomplish wonderful things, but the bottom line is God has a net under you everywhere you go. And the bottom, the truth is, is all you have to do is just go. Just say it. Just do it. You'd be shocked. It'll work. <laughs> It'll work. Because God is at work in you, both to do and to will of His good pleasure, not yours. But you'll find that as you delight yourself in the Lord, not only does he give you the desires of your heart, but you find out that the desires of your heart are to be delighting in the Lord. It's funny how that gets turned around, but things in this world are passing away, and the lust thereof, and even your flesh, and all the desires that you thought you wanted. But God is giving you something that's going to be with you eternal. Not just himself, which he is living in you, but something that goes far beyond that, which is the capacity to continue on learning about who he is, what he is, and how he is, from now until the end of this age, and ages to ages, eternal life to come. And that life keeps going on from age to age to age to age, even as day by day by day by day, you help me to start my day right. <laughs>